Okay, uh, welcome to Live at Hearts at East and the A&R chat. My name is Emily Stockhaus. I'm a freelance project manager and currently working with Live at Hearts at East. Uh, we are here today to talk about A&Rs, how do you become one, what is an A&R, when do I need an A&R, etc. Joining me today is Patrick Larson from Playground Music, Scandinavia, and Anna Lindholm from Icons Creating Evil Art. Um, lovely to have you joining us here today. Uh, and I thought we'd just kick it off with uh, you guys explaining what is an A&R. Anna, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, an A&R is like your, um, if you are an artist, the A&R is your uh, go-to person at the at the label. Um, it's your uh, your project manager and uh, the one that is taking care of you artistically and project wise from the label side. Um, earlier on, they that's that was the uh, the kind of person you also used to call the talent scout one. Uh, scouting new talent for the record labels. Um, but yeah, today we call them a &Rs, like us. Yeah, the, the word is a, a very traditional old uh, word from the music business since way back. It stands for artist and repertoire. And um, yeah, like uh, Anna was talking about, it's your main first contact at a music company, uh, the a &R is your main champion for the music that you're creating, the one that you have your creative dialogues with, um, you know, the one you're bouncing back and forth ideas about where where are you, where am I going musically, uh, where do I want to go with my music. Um, so so we are there, passionate about music, uh, about artist development, about going from A to B. Etc. And just trying to, from an artist's perspective, and where that artist is coming from creatively, trying to make that artist express themselves the best way possible and become the biggest artist possible. I mean, that's our goal. We want to exploit that talent and just take it as far as we possibly can. Mm. Yeah, that's really yeah. Good. What and understand you like understand you as an artist like in a in a bigger way that maybe is possible for you uh, to do and make you as much uh, as much you as possible yeah and it, mm. it's it's quite challenging actually because uh, I just read this book about this uh, Swedish uh, music legend in the music business and he talked a lot about um the A&R becoming that artist uh, liaison and the best friend within the company. And it's, it's difficult to try to figure out who you should be um, loyal to. Uh, he speaks a lot in the book about, I need to be loyal to the artist and not the boss paying my salary. And I've been thinking a lot about that. And it's, um, it is a really tough uh, dialogue because on one hand, you have an artist that wants to do a lot of stuff creatively, financially, mm -hmm. there's a lot of visions and goals. On the other hand, you often have a company that you're part of where you have a lot of people you need to um, uh, report to. So um, yeah. being an A&R takes a lot of gut, takes a lot of risk calculating. <laughs> and, you know, you, you want to follow your gut all the time, but maybe you mm -hmm. can only do that a few times if you don't start to succeed. Um, your gut feeling needs to... Um, uh, pay out as well and become successes, but um, it is important, especially in an a, a AI-driven society where everything is so data-driven that you know we need to trust our gut and 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 that mm -hmm. dialogue with the artist about where we're going, what the next natural step is is it's key. It's the most fundamental part of our job. Yeah, and as as long as you're um, honest. It can be quite easy to be like loyal to both the, the company and the artist because um, in a in a good and healthy uh, collaboration, the success of the artist is the success of the 
company. So what is good for the artist is also good for the company. So as long as the communication is good, um, being loyal to both sides is not that much of a problem. And also, again, how do we measure success? Mm. Success can be measured in many different ways. Uh, yeah. There's a creative success. There's a media uh, success. There's a, mm. a streaming and amount of followers and sales yeah. uh, success. Selling tickets on tour success. There's so many different ways of, um, of measuring success. And we also need to go back a little bit to the original way of thinking, uh, which was artist development takes time. So it's a, in, you know, realizing it's a marathon and not a sprint mm, uh, exactly. and, and having that long-term dialogue already from the start with the artist that it's not going to happen overnight. We can't just look at the first weekend of release and be sad that we didn't get new music Friday at Spotify or something. Mm. It's about, you know, touching people about, you know, gaining more and more, um, uh, progress step by step could i yeah. ask um for people watching this what is the difference between an a and r and a manager if you got an artist and they got a manager and an a and r where are what's the difference and um yeah well the um a manager is um um you could say like coordinating or um, taking care of the um, all the parts of the artist's business. You know the the live parts and the the, um, uh, the label parts. Um, you know all of it, the publishing. Um, and we uh, as ANRs are uh, more or less only working with, the, or we are we are at least focusing on the the recorded music part of the business mm -hmm. um, and if if the artists do have a, um, a manager too um, that manager can help us understand um, how we can make um, our part of the work uh, work as well as possible with the rest of the parts of the the artist business yeah, the, the, the manager. Yeah, clear. The, the, the manager is like the should be if there is a manager in place. Uh, the manager should be the closest person to the artist, mm. and the person that oversees all different parts of the brand and 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 and, and the artistry. Uh, and it's a very complicated business we're working in with so many different uh, players involved. Mm. You have like um, the writers, you have producers, you have musicians, you have artists, there's publishers, there's managers, there's record labels, distributors, uh, live agents, promoters. There's so many different people. And, uh, but but what's, what's key for an artist is to one careful step at a time, add new people to their teams. And mm -hmm. sometimes the art manager is there early on I think there's a more there's there's more of a tradition internationally to have a manager involved early on. Management hasn't traditionally been a big thing in in Sweden. Um, so normally, I mean, there has been a lot of great managers throughout the the years, but it's it's because of our that our market is so small and concentrated. Often the artist has been their own managers, and often labels or publishers or agents on the live side step in as occasional okay. managers because we yeah. are managers in a way, even though it's not official, we mm. have management credit or management fee, but of course it's in our interest to manage the artist to make right decisions. So yeah. Yeah. But, but, but like Anna was saying, we, we as a &R, at record labels are focusing primarily on the, the recorded side of the business, the music recorded and, um, and released. Yeah. Cool. Um, how do you become an A&R if you want to, if you're interested in music and how do you uh, become an A&R, Anna? I wouldn't recommend any quick fixes. 
Um, I think it's uh, really, really important to um, know the music industry uh, and have quite a bit of um, experience from the music industry, but, but also like from life, I think, because it's, um, um, it's a pretty um, um, complicated role um, as pa Patrick said before, um, and you need to really um, be able to understand um, a person and uh, that person's uh, art and um, and how to how to make the most of it. Um, so I, if you want to work as an ANR, uh, I really, really recommend you to start by doing something else um, like working. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, working at uh, a record label. You can work um, like working log logistics at, uh, um, at a live agency, um, like planning tours. And, and so um, everything that helps you understand what kind of um, support an artist might need and how their uh, what what their reality looks like um, and how the industry works is useful if you want to work as an ANR. Um, and there are a lot of really good um, like schools to go to and um, things like that to to um, get an education. But I um, I wouldn't say that you can just um, study your way to being a good ANR. Um, no, I think I also agree. I think life, uh, a good ANR comes out of passion and experience and just doing a lot of things creatively mm. out of, um, out of uh, passion and drive. And um, uh, I always say that I ended up doing this just waking up one morning and realizing that someone paid me for the, for doing this, but mm -hmm. I probably would have done it anyway, because it is that drive and passion from when you wake up to you go to bed. And most A and R's comes from have be, having being uh, musicians or artists themselves, or they come from uh, the live side of things, events, uh, publishing. Um, there's a lot of different ways in, uh, but I think it's you, you need to build up enough experience around um, the process to be able mm. to be in that position. Because you know the the creative passion, understanding the dynamics of music and understanding genres and markets, it's mm. one thing. But also just understanding how how an industry works. Um, yeah. the, the ins and outs of an industry. So I think, I mean, one of the things uh, about management, um, A&R, is that you could start by doing management mm. because A&R, in a way, it's, it's all about discovery. It's, again, going back to gut feeling. Um, often you, you, you stumble upon a, a talent, uh, which could be a friend or someone you discovered online, and you're determined to help that person become a star. So mm. another way into doing a &R is to be a successful manager, that you bring an artist all the way to the top. And that has given you enough experience to actually do that again with someone else. I think great a &Rs have done it over and over and over again and learned from mm. the process, always trusting the gut feeling about uh, the, the, the creativity and, and the discovery the actual music and the artist you hear and see, but the process of how to roll it out is something you learn by mistakes, successes, failures, etc. Mm. Uh, and doing it week after week, you know, you you you, you don't make the same mistakes too often. After a while, <laughs> you learn. But again, it's, it's again, it's it's down to guts. It's down to trusting that this is great. I mm. love this. The goosebumps. Like, yeah. I love this. I want to tell the world how great this is. And I want to work together with this artist to tell that artist's story to the world. Mm. Yeah, I really like, <laughs> like what you said about, um, um, like, 
that you need to um, want to help. I think that feeling is important that um, like the, the real passion for the music and the project mm -hmm. and that you, um, you want to put your, your time and expertise into someone else's art because you care so much about it. The, the passion and that kind of drive, uh, I really think it's crucial. What and, happened? And, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to bother you. I just want to say this because I think it's a good good comment that I just came up with <laughs> that I don't want to forget about. So I'll I'll say it now. <laughs> I think with as with everything, there's good and there's bad A and Rs. Um, I'm not going to say who's which. I mean, people might think I'm a bad A and R, and 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 that's the way it is. But I think the bad A and Rs in the long run are the ones chasing the success. Yeah. They're, they're the followers. They're the ones that look at the charts and try to find the next thing that sounds like something else that is already yeah. successful. I keep hearing that from, from people all over and, 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 and they want the quick fix. Uh, I think the, the great A&Rs historically from 50, 60 years back has always been the ones that go against the stream. The ones mm. that trust the the talent, and it's better to lead than to follow. And and if you just stick to what you're good at, and you keep supporting that real raw talent, your turn your time is going to come. So that's also a very important thing to to follow your gut, follow what's great about artists, the songwriting, the productions, the the musicianship and not follow, but to lead instead. But I want to tell you, because you talk a lot about passion and doing things, you know, you have to really um, love it, what you work with. But what happens, can you, as an A&R, work with things you don't like? Say, for example, you work at a major label or you work where you have a big roster and you have to work with artists you might not be, might not be your favourite, whatever, um, how do you tackle that as an a &R? Does that happen or do you have a say in who you work with? I think, um, one, of the, I think one of the things you hate about being an a &R is to take over someone else's signing. I think that's historically been something that a and doesn't really like. I mean, there, there has been um, cases where an a &R quits because that a &R wants to go somewhere else, but the thing is that the artist doesn't really sign to the person itself. It signs to the company. So when an A&R leaves, it, it creates a very odd and strange situation because that was your champion. That was your person that talked about you in the hallways and was fighting for you in, in, in the meetings and the ones that like, was like the one that discovered you. And there has been situations where the transition has been smooth, but there's also been situations where, again, if you're going to be true, you're going to have opinion. If, if you want to be true to yourself, you're going to have opinions about where that artist should do and should go creatively. And you want to have that dialogue. And if you can't come to an agreement, it's, it's not easy. And also to touch base on something else I think you were going into, I think if a label has a lot of signings, it is a problem taking the time to make it work really great because if you have too much to work with, you are going to do a sloppy job. So I think, yeah, it, it's not a, nobody wants to be a bad a &R, but it's just that so, sometimes circumstances make it tough. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like taking care of your professional relationships um, takes just as much time as taking care of your um, private relationships. Step um, kid. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you you can't have. It's not your own. Uh, kid. It's someone else's kid that you take care of because you <laughs> you marry a man or woman. So okay, you had kids from a former relationship. Okay, I can I can be a stepdad, but you know I don't like them the way you like them. <laughs> well, what I meant was more like if you have if you have a lot of friends, it's hard to uh, know maybe everything about them all the time and you know spend as much time on them as you'd like and it's the same with artists um but um i think to answer your question if um 
if it's um i think you should always have a say in in which artists uh, you work with as an AR. I, and i think that is important too uh, and i also think it's important to find something that you're passionate about um with that project um maybe you don't think that um the music is like the the most spectacular but but maybe you really like um understand the audience or maybe you really like the artist as a person uh, or there might be you know some uh, something that you really um understand and care for um and as long as you can find that um i think you can do a really good job still and i think also it's a big there is a difference between the newer artist that you discover mm -hmm. early and you try to take them from nothing to something. Uh, there's a difference between those kind of acts and artists and, you know, compared to the established ones, because we sometimes make new deals with established artists that already has a pretty clear idea how they sound and where they're coming from. They have a history of success. Those kind of acts are sometimes easier to take on because it's pretty clear where they're coming from, where their audience is. Uh, so we're in, a, we're in a position that, you know, we, we have those discussions all the time with bigger acts. And, and, and I think we can, I think that's easier. But whenever you take something from nothing to something and you, you stumble in the dark in the beginning, I think there needs to be a really tight relationship. And it's, it's you and the artist. Primarily. If we uh, want to flip it then, if you are an artist and you are getting signed by an A&R and do you have a say uh, as an artist about your A&R, maybe you don't, it doesn't work. Or say, for example, you start at a label and your A&R leaves and you get a new A&R. Do they, as an artist, have something to say? And uh, I mean, we, we, neither of us can answer for all uh, labels but um, since communication is very very important and uh, the relationship between the the label but also like the specific a r and the artist uh, really has to be based on uh, mutual respect um, and trust um, it's if the artist uh, doesn't feel safe um, with their a r um, it's very, very important to listen to, to uh, the artist uh, and try to change the arrangement and um, maybe find, find someone else to, um, to do the job. Or maybe, maybe the, the, the A&R and the artist just needs to have a sit down and talk about um, how can we make this work as good as possible and what do you need from me and what do I need from you, etc. Um, yeah, but it's... It's, uh, it's very... We, we, Huh? Yeah, it's, I, I, it's very sensitive. I mean, we're working with we're working with people's art. It's you know their most sacred you know inner feelings, emotions, uh, creativity is. I mean, it's. Um, I mean, we're not selling rubber tires or screws. I mean, we're selling people's expressions, and it's yeah. really difficult. I mean. We, I try to have, sometimes we lose out on signing certain artists because we take, we take our time in discussing, discussing with the artists why we should do a, a, a partnership. And, and, and I'm trying to be very hard because I don't want to have that discussion after we've signed. No. I want to have that discussion before. So it's sort of like a, a longer dating period we take our time before we decide to get married. Um, and I think it's very important. You, we, we might lose out. And, and I've met with artists that after our dialogue and they've signed with someone else, they realized how great our discussion was. Uh, but then it was too late. And then, you know, it, it, we, there's always going to be feelings involved, egos, um, how misunderstandings, um, and there's an old saying in the music business that whenever things go well, it's because the artist is great. And whenever things doesn't go well, it's because the record label didn't do a good job. <laughs> That's a classical 
quote. And, you know, I'm not saying that's the case all the time, but there's always, you know, it's, it's always easier to blame something and blame someone. And, and it's a tough discussion. Uh, and it, it, it's it, there's always going to be relationships that are that go sour, but then it's down to solving it some way, exchanging the A&R or letting you know letting the artist go. Mm. How do you, as an artist, do you find an A&R or do the A&R find you, or uh, you know how do you or when do you know when 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 do you need an A&R, uh, Anna? Um, well, you can, um, it can go both ways. Um, we can find the artists and the artists can, can find us. Um, it's, um, someone is reaching out and, uh, then just as Patrick said, then, then we start flirting, uh, and then we start dating and then we can see what it leads to. Um, but usually Let's say that that um, that the the artist is reaching out to uh, the label. Um, usually, they are reaching out to like not not just one, but like at least a couple of labels um, that they've I don't know heard good things about or have had a kept an eye on for a while and um, likes what they're doing um, and tells tells us a bit about their project and if we find it interesting we might um, have a meeting and um, start talking about it um, and that's when we when we start um, to start to explore the gut feeling about uh, about the possible collab collab uh, collaboration uh, if uh, if we feel like okay I uh, I understand this I like this I like this person I think we could be close and uh, understand each other. Um, yeah, uh, it's a very, very um, social thing, like a very human uh, thing. Uh, how to um, like it, it's a it's a relationship, and yeah. you um, you just start talking and trying what it feels like. Um, but you, um, I'd say that you. You need an ANR when um, when you need um, when you when you need a close like um, professional friend uh, in your team. Um, maybe maybe that that close relationship is. Um, it could also be as we as we said before. It could be. A manager, or it could be your your agent. Um, so if you if you have a, a really good um, manager, then you might not feel that you need to sign to a, a record label. Um, but that also comes down to uh, how much time you are comfortable with putting into like doing the work. Because um, if if you sign with a label and work with an ANR. Um, then someone else is taking care of a lot of the, um, a lot of the, you know, the sitting behind the computer and writing the emails and filling out the forms and doing a lot of thinking and planning and uh, a lot of things that you can do yourself, but that takes time. And um, most artists uh, did not become artists because they um, love like writing marketing plans, but because they love making music and that maybe not just love making music, but really needs to make music because that's like their, the air they breathe. Um, so working with a record label is having other people uh, working for you and for your art. Um, and that gives you uh, um, another kind of like freedom to just do the, the part of the art history that you want to do. But, but there is something important and crucial about having to, you know, been there and done the hustle and the, and the struggle in the early days. Yeah. Um, I think I prefer, because I'm out and about, you talk to a lot of publishers, managers, um, I'm following a lot of people I respect and I admire on socials. 
uh, one thing lead to another. And um, I, I love the discovery that I stumble upon something, something I didn't know about. I, mm. I prefer to chase something than to get it sent to me. Uh, both things happen, but I, I love to chase something. And I love to try to convince someone to sign with us that doesn't want to get signed. The best artist is the one that doesn't want to get signed. That's the challenge. That's the one I love. Because it's, it is important to understand the dynamics and the process of releasing music, to have an understanding what's behind it. Uh, I'm talking to one artist now that has done it for many singles. And it's like, you know, they have to do the cover. They need to deliver a master. They need to write a pitch text for Spotify for artists. And, and maybe that's not something they need to do their whole career and they shouldn't do in the whole career, but understanding what it means. So they respect the other team members, hard work and job. Um, and also be, be besides the, the office things that the artists want to uh, let someone else do. I also think having a clear vision of who they are as artists is important because I, as an A&R, and this has always been my philosophy, is that I want to change as little as possible. What I see in here and what I fall in love with and get attracted by, that's the thing I want to work with. And so changing too much, sort of, it's, 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 it's not what it's about because then it's going to be a lot of complications and misunderstandings. So I want the, the artist from where that artist is at the moment working with the um with the possibilities the artists have i mean mm. reaching out to friends about getting a mix done uh how do i master this how do i make a cool cover i mean whenever artists do it themselves they tend to make it happen if, if they're passionate about it enough and they want to release something mm they will make that cover sleeve happen. They will make that trailer happen. They will make that video happen. And that sort of sets an idea for what, how they should and uh, want to look and sound. And if I share that vision, it's easier to take it to the next level. Uh, so I want as little question marks as possible. I want the artist to be driven with passion and want to be the in the front run, driving the, uh, the car and being the one that shows us what what they want the next step to be be and 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 that sort of um that has a very positive effect on the whole company because often which has happened way too often the artist becomes the lazy one in the in the partnership and mm. that's that should not happen it should be the artist that is on the phone all the time emailing having ideas having yeah. new songs, being on social media, but just being very like active because this is yeah. life and death for them. So that drives us. So that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and I, I think that that's usually based on some kind of misunderstanding that when, um, when you uh, get signed, um, like that's when you can stop doing stuff. Um, but really it's when, when, you, when you start working with a record label, That's when you really need to um, you need to be the most engaged in your in your project, um, and you cannot just let it go and have us doing it because, yeah. The only you advantage we really push. have as a, an established company is that we we have more experience. Mm. Um, we have more people in place with experience and know how they can do the thing that the artist thinks is complicated and difficult to do, we can do easily blindfolded because it, mm -hmm. it's just part of our DNA. We just, we just do it daily and we have open doors to a lot of decision makers, taste makers, et cetera. But the problem is if you're the main editor at a magazine or the person that this decides who's going to be put on a playlist, no matter how good friends we are with them, we need a story to tell. Mm. The song, the production, the narrative, the angle still needs to be there. We yeah. have an open door. We have access to the people that matters. 
but if we have nothing to say, and, 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 and often I've been in situations where it's been a really terrible situation where I've been trying to get someone to do something around an artist. And the first thing the, art, uh, the person does is Google the artist and say, well, you try to push me this artist, this artist hasn't updated their social media for five days. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> if the artist doesn't believe enough in themselves to make those updates, tell the story about what's going on, why would I care? So, so, so you know, the artist needs to take lead. They need to be the mm. mo most passionate about their story, their narrative, their angle, their music, and just keep, keep pushing. Because mm. it's everything between the singles and the albums and EVs that matters as well. There can never be a, like a dull moment and a dip. And it needs to be a constant race, just mm. being creative because you are creative. I often tell artists, how come you haven't done something today? You, I know you were in a session with that cool person. I know you went to that photo shoot. I know you did that. I know you made this funny thing. Yeah, but do I need to tell people that? Of course you should. It's part of your creativity. Express yourself. Um, every everything you do is part of your creativity in a way. Yeah, very interesting. So to wrap this up a bit, what are your favorite things about being an AR, Patrick? It is the um, the satisfaction of being able to take something from like hearing that early demo, just falling in love with that demo and just continue to work with that artist and demo, putting the final touch to it, planning the release, seeing it being released and embraced by people. And then the final like goosebumps moment is standing in the crowd on a live show and hearing mm -hmm that song being performed and hearing a crowd sing the lyrics back. That's a pretty satisfying, like, boom, we made it. <laughs> I, there's mm -hmm. Because uh, getting that appreciation for something you've been part of releasing, to get that confirmation from a live audience, it's, it's hard to beat. Because streams is one thing, radio plays is one thing, but to stand in the middle of a crowd and hear them sing the music back to the artist on stage and loving it, that's, that, that's, a, that's a feeling that's hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, art is, is so important to people and music is it's so, so, so important to the audience. Um, it's not only the, the feelings and experiences of the artist, uh, themselves but it's also um it's making the the audience like understand themselves and um it's such a big part of of their lives um like physically but also mostly emotionally it's super super important and what's happening when when the music connects with the audience uh is really magic uh, and it's so powerful and um, to help the, um, the music and the art um, connect uh, with the audience or just helping it reach the audience is um, it, it's very uh, it's a strong experience and just to you know have have someone trust you with their art um, and the, their most, the stuff that they've been, you know, aching about and the, their most, yeah, truest selves, that they trust you with that um, and they trust you to, to help them um, communicating that. Um, it's beautiful and... Um, it's making it a pleasure to work, really. So sum it up, it's all about passion and love. It really is, totally is. Mm. And Always. Trust. Always, yeah. It's music, it is passionate. <laughs> yeah, it's art. 
Yeah. yeah. It's 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 hard to um I mean we we often become salespeople in a way, but it's difficult to sell art mm. without things being complicated and weird sometimes. Um and I, I I just want us to be like extended arms of that artist. We are duplications of the artist. Mm. I want to be in the meeting and speak as passionate about a single release than that the artist should have done. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to share that. I want to go deep into the DNA of, of the artist. And even though I wasn't the one that experienced exactly what the artist is, is, is singing about, I want to come as close as possible to that. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you so much, Anna and Patrick, for having this chat with me. I hope that people who's been watching have learned something. And if they have any more questions, um, we could probably meet up in the virtual bars after this and uh, talk more about ANRs and passion and music and everything. Um, so thank you so much. And hopefully thank you for we can having us. Uh, see thank each you. other in real life next year. Fingers crossed. The Fingers dream crossed. team, Pat yeah. and Anna. Woo. Woo. All right, thank you so much.